Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to focus on DNA. How is it built? What does it do? And how is it regulated? In this segment, we're going to look at DNA replication, which is the process by which a DNA molecule makes a perfect copy of itself using a team of enzymes. Now, the Nobel team that hypothesized in their 1958 publication, they um, hypothesized that the double helix model suggests a relatively simple method of replication. So they knew that based on the double helix structure, DNA must be able to, in a way, unzip itself and then make two new copies from the unzipped original strands. So we know DNA is a double strand, so it makes sense, or because we know that A pairs with T and C pairs with G, that if you unzip the two strands, then there's enough information in the system because the strand across from the other strand tells you what's missing. So that all you need to do is unzip the hydrogen bonds and fill in the complementary nucleotides. So if we look up close at a strand of DNA, here we can see adenine paired with thymine and guanine paired with cytosine. And these nucleotides are arranged in what we call an anti-parallel structure. Uh, one strand is running from 3 to 5, and the strand across from it is running from 5 to 3. So we have what we call an anti-parallel structure. Okay, they run in opposite directions. And remember, new bonds can only be formed on the open three prime ends of each nucleotide. So if we want to, for example, we want to make each this strand longer, okay, you can only build this way on this side and this way on this side. Um, you can't build here and you can't build here. Because remember, the phosphate groups can't form a, um, a dehydration synthesis with another free nucleotide. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So here's a double-stranded DNA. and We've unzipped it, moved the two halves apart by breaking the hydrogen bonds. Okay. Um, here's an original strand over here, and we can build the missing strand or replicate this original strand of DNA in a direction going from bottom to top because with each step, we're adding to the open three prime end. But on the other side, the other original strand, remember, we can't build going up because new nucleotides cannot bond to the open five prime end here. It's in the wrong direction. So this strand cannot be replicated in the same direction as the other strand. So that means that each strand of DNA is being replicated in opposite directions because of its anti-parallel structure. Okay, so the anti-parallel structure requires DNA replication to take place in two directions at the same time. And in order for the cell to do this, the enzymes must build one side continuously and the other side in pieces called Okazaki fragments. Now the enzymes that do the DNA replication, there are three classes. One class is called DNA polymerase, and these are responsible for opening up something called a replication fork, which is where the unzipping takes place. So you can think of DNA polymerase as being like the tab on a zipper. All right, so if you have a zipper, all right, DNA polymerase is the one that, that you pull downward to open it up. Uh, DNA primases are short segments, are enzymes that add short segments of RNA to form starting places. So let's say you started unzipping here, the primases add a little, little bit of RNA here, which, which then allows the new DNA to be replicated in this direction on this side. But because this side is built in the opposite direction, the, primases, the, um, the primers get added by DNA primase down here, and then it's built in this direction. But because as this is being built, the replication fork is continuing to move down, you're constantly having to add new little, new little primers as the replication fork opens up. And finally, the third enzyme are DNA ligases, and they come back in and they remove the little short segments of RNA, and they seal the bonds between the sugars and the phosphates so that the two new strands of DNA are now complete. Um, let's look at this picture here where you can see what I'm talking about. So in this, in this diagram, we have the leading strand right here being built on the top piece. So this top piece goes from five prime to three prime, labeled here in dark blue, and we are building the leading strand of new DNA in this direction, all right? 
whereas the lagging strand is down here, and it's being replicated in this direction, in, uh, excuse me, in the opposite direction. So because it can't, the um, primase can't be, can't add the primers until this opens up, you can see how we end up with these fragments, these little sections of um, new DNA that are being added piece by piece as it opens up in the opposite direction. So the lagging strand is on the bottom. It's replicated in the opposite direction as the unzipping action continues. Here I've highlighted the DNA polymerase enzymes. Okay, remember they're responsible for unzipping or opening up the replication fork and adding in new nucleotides. Okay, note that the primate here are DNA, DNA primases enzymes. Oh, that's a that's a spelling error there. Sorry about that. So DNA primases are enzymes that add short segments of RNA called primers to act as starting points. And now the starting point for the leading strand up here is way back here somewhere, whereas the starting strands or the primers of RNA are added. Um, that's the newest one. This one was added a little bit before, and this is probably the oldest one. Okay. And finally, we have um, DNA ligase enzymes, which remove the primers, replace them with DNA nucleotides, and seal the sugar phosphate bonds, completing the whole process. All right, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, please, please meet with me.